What the Doha Debates means to me is it's a chance for young people to push themselves into really talking and discussing the issue, talking about and discussing the issues that are really in the heart of their community, but they never really thought about them because they were always in the background. It's a chance to kind of go out and really think about them and really talk about them so that you can get to some understanding of what you're dealing with on a daily basis, but on a much deeper level. My name is Asma Al-Adawi. I'm 24 years old from Qatar. I used to be a student at Georgetown University School of Foreign Service here, and now I'm an employee in the office of Her Highness Sheikh Hamza. My Doha debate story started in, I guess, 2005 when I had my first year of college. I was invited by some of the professors. I was encouraged to go. I went, uh, took an interest, asked a question, and it's been ongoing ever since. One of the nicest experiences that I had with the Doha debates was definitely the trip to Washington DC because we got to be Education City students in, it's funny, in my home university but outside. So different, same university but different setting, different people and I think it was a really wonderful way of bridging the gap between Education City, Georgetown here and Georgetown there. It was about the Israeli lobby it was definitely an interesting one. I actually did not ask a question that time around. The debate where I remember asking a question is the one on women, which just happened this last season. Uh, I asked uh, why we keep blaming the kind of the Islamists, not the Islamists. Why, why do we keep blaming people who are religious for things that are, have nothing to do with religion? Assalamu alaikum, my name is Asma from Qatar. Um, I feel that there's a, a vibe that there's a kind of an unfair attack on Islamists and Islamic, Islamic groups and we just came from a regime in Tunisia which basically prevented almost suppressed let's say any Islamic practice and um, I don't understand why we're fearing them now because this is the thing people if you're talking normal people they take the word of God as the primary law before the state. So they're going to think, they're going to follow Islamic practice anyway. And if they were suppressed before, they don't want to be suppressed now. So why are we fearing the reintroduction of Islamic law or Islamic principles into our current democratic practices? It's, I think, an enlightening experience. It's a way for you to grow uh, in your ideas and in your interactions with other people and in your interactions with experts. And I think for me it was an experience that really built up my confidence. And uh, this is one of the key things that you need to progress in life. Well, yes, you. Hi, I'm from uh, Qatar. Um, I believe in freedom for women. My question is for Azra Nomani. But I also believe in, I, I believe in complete freedom for women. But I believe in appropriate marriages as well. And I think in Muslim societies we're very tight-knit. We're close with our families. We're close with our neighbors. So. If the girl chooses to marry anyone she likes and she goes for an amar a marriage that she knows is inappropriate but she says all she needs is love, all she needs is that she knows him, she's going to be isolated, she's going to be unhappy and the future consequences are going to weigh in a lot heavier than the actual immediate satisfaction of I married someone I love. What good is it that you're married to someone you love if your family's not speaking to you? What good is it you're marrying someone you love if at the end of the day you can't she herself will be embarrassed to be in that marriage because she knows it's inappropriate, because she knows it's not going to work, and she knows it doesn't fit in the context of the society. So how do you reconciliate that? Can I, can I ask you, you're, you're not married? I'm not married, no. What factors will you weigh up when you make your decision to get married? Religion? Family? Well, government? religion obviously for me is, th there's no, I'm, I will marry a Muslim. For me, I want to marry from the Gulf because I believe that cultures need to be similar. I, if I feel that if I marry someone from a culture that is way too different, it's just going to be upsetting for everybody, including myself, because I'm very close with my family, I love my family, and I want them to come and to receive me and my husband well. I don't want them to feel like And if you awkward. fell in love with somebody who wasn't from the Gulf, would you think it appropriate for the government to step in and tell you that you can't marry them? Well, what governments do is, 
for me, the government is, again, a safety net as well. I don't think it's right for them to say no, but at the same time, I believe in taking responsibility for yourself and making decisions that you know are appropriate. Toraya Lorraine. That's one sane young woman. Mm -hmm. I like what you say. <laughs> I really like what you say.